Hey guys, I'm Vulture Culture, and today we're going to talk about how to listen to filters. In today's episode, we will focus on filter versus classic filters. So before we talk about other types of filters, why don't we talk about another useful source as far as when we're listening to filters so we can actually hear what's going on. In the previous episode, we have already discussed the sawtooth wave, which is actually just a series of harmonics, starting with the fundamental, which is the lowest note, and then every time that frequency multiplies by a whole number, we have another another harmonic. And that keeps going all the way up to where we can't hear anymore. And this highlights a couple of reasons why a sawtooth wave makes a lot of sense to test a filter with. As a sawtooth wave contains both even and odd harmonics, so noise, unlike a waveform, has no discernible pitch. Now the type of noise you're gonna see time and time again is white noise, and this is what it looks like on this frequency analyzer. So listening to that, you can hear that it's very bright, almost a little harsh on the ear, and it's not very deep, and that's sort of mirrored by this curve here. So what's really going on is this frequency analyzer is tuned to human hearing, and human hearing actually drops off at about three decibels per octave. So what's flat in the real world is not flat to the human ear. Just like a two-pole filter's roll-off of 12 decibels per octave, the human ear has about a three decibel per octave roll-off. So white noise, even though it's technically flat, actually sounds bright or harsh to us. So there is a type of noise you can use, which is called pink noise, that's flat to human hearing. And that sounds like this. And you can see that in this example, it's about flat to human hearing. Obviously, the thing about noise is, is there's gonna be all sorts of fluctuations in it, so you're not gonna get a perfect picture. But you can see that this pink noise is basically flat and not divided up into harmonics like our saw and square waves were. And on that note, I just wanna point out something about other synthesizer waves you might see time and time again, which would be the sine wave, which you can see if I play one. It's actually just one harmonic, or really the fundamental note with no harmonics. And a triangle wave is like a square wave in that it only has odd harmonics. It just has less of them, or rather the amplitude falls off a lot faster. But you can see that it's the same harmonics as a square wave just at a higher amplitude. Anyways, back to pink noise, let's check out what the low pass filter looks like with pink noise as a source. You're seeing a nice gentle four pole roll off there if I increase the resonance. You can see the advantage to using pink noise in this is that we've got a flat line we're listening to as opposed to the line falling off. So it's a little easier to hear the way that that resonance peak is interacting with the frequency spectrum. So what about a high pass filter? Well, if we move this over to high pass in Filterverse with the cutoff frequency all the way down, now we're hearing all of the pink noise sound. And then as we increase the cutoff, we're now cutting out the low end. And if I increase the resonance, it sounds like this. So let's increase the number of poles in the filter. So that's again going from 12 decibels per octave to 24 decibels an octave. And you can see here that we're getting a steeper drop off here. And on the graph, that looks like. So it's a subtle thing. It's not the most impactful thing with this filter, but it is there. So a band pass only passes one band and cuts out the frequencies below and above that band. So here's how that sounds. Now let's increase the resonance here. And let's look at that on the analyzer. Band reject is the opposite of a band pass. So now instead of passing those frequencies, it's the only frequencies that are being rejected or cut out of the sound.
It's a very distinctive sound and can sometimes be a little enigmatic or hard to put your finger on. And finally, we have a peaking filter. This is basically what's happening with EQ and this is just adding a peak at the frequency without cutting anything. So like a bandpass filter, but not actually rejecting any of the audio signal. So far, everything that we've been talking about, we've been listening to the Swiss Army Knife, which is the first of many filters in Filterverse. I'm recording this video during the public beta. By the time you watch this video, there may be many more filters than what you're seeing here. But the Swiss Army Knife is exactly what it says it is. It's a state variable filter that sounds great. But there are other filters built into Filterverse, like the bread and butter filter. A really useful thing in Filterverse is over here on the right hand side, we have a little description of all of the filters in Filterverse. This filter has a ladder filter design, which is a different kind of filter. The characteristic thing about a ladder filter is that as you crank the resonance, you lose a lot of low end. Now the first ladder filter was actually invented by George Campbell in 1922. However, we mostly associate ladder filters with Moog synthesizers because Robert Moog patented the voltage-controlled ladder filter in 1969 and was the fundamental building block of all of his synthesizers. So looking at this design, you can see that we still can morph between a low-pass, band-pass, and high-pass ladder filter, but we also have controls up to four poles, but now down to one pole, and the sound is gonna be quite different. So with this filter, you get more of that resonance character with the more poles you have. Jumping back to the Swiss Army knife, you'll notice that's less of a thing. I'm really just hearing the difference in sound of the high end, the roll off of those high frequencies. Whereas with the bread and butter filter, it's affecting the character of the resonance much more. Turn the drive knob up. Going back to the Swiss Army knife, that drive. Almost sounds like you're running it through a distortion pedal. And let's just look at the frequency analysis to see the difference here. So this is the Swiss Army knife with eight resonance. And this is the bread and butter with eight resonance. So you can see about a six decibel difference in terms of how much fundamental is coming through on the filter in that example. And six decibels is double in human hearing. So actually six decibels less in the bread and butter filter is half the amount of bass in the bread and butter filter than the Swiss Army knife. Moving along, we have Deep Cutter, which is a Butterworth filter design. And what sets this filter apart is it has an almost Roland-like sound, which is a very aggressive, very sharp, pronounced sound. And we can hear what this sounds like with some resonance. you can see that we can dial this all the way up to 16 poles, which is pretty extreme. And if we look at the frequency analysis, you can see how deep that cutoff is. There is still some saturation going on. So you can see that there are harmonics being created there, right there and there, so on and so forth. So one of the interesting characteristics about filters and resonances is actually the saturation which tames the feedback from going to infinity. So all good filters are gonna have this sort of saturation thing going on, sort of stopping or controlling the filter. Let's check out how this sounds with some resonance, as well as some drive from the filter input. When you drive the filter input with this filter, it's very clean. Let's turn the drive up. You'll notice with this filter, you get a velvety, almost guitar amp-like sound. So the deep cutter is more useful for some more extreme type effects, as well as if you just want a filter that really screams. 
Moving along to brick wall, you'll see we now have an extremely steep slope with a linear response that doesn't saturate. So you'll notice that it says linear here and that the other filters that we've listened to so far say saturating and self resonating. So like I was saying earlier, the saturation actually tames the feedback loop of the resonance of a filter and stops it from skyrocketing to infinity. So because Polyverse Music didn't want to have to pay for a bunch of people's speakers, they did the nice thing and actually stopped it from being able to self oscillate and rip through your brand new pair of studio monitors. And you'll see that there's no drive option here. The number of poles we have goes from six to 12 and we can only do low pass or high pass. Let's hear how this sounds. Let's check out what it looks like with the frequency analysis graph. So what you can see is that even though you sort of hear the resonance of it, there's no actual resonance happening. The filter is so steep that you can distinctly hear the individual harmonics emerging and disappearing at the cutoff frequency. It's not actually resonance. And if we try out with 12 poles, you can see this incredibly sharp drop off. Clear glass is another linear filter. This one is interesting because it also can't self oscillate and is more linear. What's cool about it is when it's open, it's completely bypassed. So there's no phase shift being involved. Let's go back to a sine wave as an example and check out how this looks through clear glass. Now let's swap it back to Swiss Army Knife and you'll see a difference here. We actually have some faint harmonics being generated from the saturation of the filter. The non-linearities are a big part of what makes a filter sound good. But in those cases where you want a perfectly flat amplitude response, you can use clear glass. And going back to the sawtooth wave, you can see... that the width of the resonance is actually a little bit wider on this filter too. So it's a really good filter to use as a master filter or almost like a DJ style filter. Okay, let's cover one more thing about listening to filters in this video, which is filter frequency modulation. So frequency modulation or FM is a term you might've heard from DX7 style synthesis, but what does it mean? Well, at its root, frequency modulation is anytime you modulate the frequency of the filter. So let's open up an oscillator. We're gonna make it very slow. And this should be a familiar sound to you if we modulate the filter here. So what's going on is it's modulating the filter's frequency in the sinusoidal pattern, AKA the shape of a sine wave up and down smoothly. And we can see that with the frequency analysis graph. More obvious with more resonance. So as we increase the speed here, we're going to reach what's called audio rate frequency modulation. That sounds like this. So what's happening here is that we are now moving that filter so many times per second that it in and of itself is causing a note to be heard. So audio rate is a psychoacoustic phenomena where when your brain starts hearing a sound more often than 20 times a second or 20 hertz, your brain starts to perceive it as a tone as opposed to discrete events. If we adjust the shape of the oscillator into a square wave, it's a little bit easier to see this. If I slow this back down, you'll hear the discrete events below 20 hertz. <laughs> Right, so that is happening at less than 20 times a second, so your brain identifies it as discrete events. So at course zero, it sounds about the same. But if we push it further, you can hear that we've changed the sound of the harmonics quite dramatically than if I turn the oscillator off. Right, it's just the regular cutoff sound. And this is affected by resonance as well. Here we're using a square wave tuned to an octave below the oscillator. What's interesting is that every other cycle is either up or down, right? Wow. 
So another really useful musical value you can use is actually to turn the coarse tuning all the way up to 60. This gives you a very vowel-y type sound that's the basis of a lot of like dubstep type stuff. You can control this by controlling the amount of frequency modulation from the oscillator sent to the cutoff. Really beautiful stuff and you can hear the filter verse can take a lot of abuse and still sound really musical which is a sign of a well-engineered plugin. All right, guys, I hope you found that helpful. I'm really impressed by Filterverse. It's incredible the amount of variety of sounds you can get out of it. I barely scratched the surface on all the different filters. I didn't even mention all of the ones that are in it. Continue to be excellent, guys, and I will see you in the next video.